Sons of Nature decided that today I focus on music and music only. We have the CEO and founder of Jumbo Sounds Records, but right now in studio with me is a recording and performing artist, Kali. She has an EP out uh, going by the name Different Definitions of Love, but one, she's here to share a story with us, Karibu San. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, your camera is number four. Uh, like I always do, I give people an opportunity to list all their credentials before we can carry on. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm a singer, songwriter, uh -huh. live performer, uh -huh. and co-producer. Co-producer. Mm -hmm. All right, what is the definition of a co-producer? So it means like you just assist with the production of the songs. Mm -hmm. So if I feel like there's something else that needs to be added, mm -hmm. I'll add it myself or I'll just tell the producer to add it. All right. Uh, today is Entrepreneurship Tuesday, uh, Hustle Tuesday on White in the Morning. And music is your hustle for sure. Yes. You even went to school for it. I did. All right. Uh, <laughs> so many people are doing it uh, as, a, as a side thing. Right. But for you, you decided to take it to school uh, and further study it. Uh, what is... Uh, what is this? What is what was the impact of, of taking your music to school? What was the difference uh, going in and out of school? Um, I think when I studied, it helped me learn different concepts mm -hmm. of what I was doing and go into the music at a very deep level. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, they say music is a language, so uh -huh. you learn how to speak it. And I feel uh -huh. like I learned how to. Speak I guess speak that language better when I went to school and I mm -hmm. studied it and I was around people who have the same dreams and mm -hmm. the same passions. So it was really cool. You learn how to also work with other musicians mm -hmm. in the industry and I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, it's a skill that you need to have. <laughs> it's a skill yeah. that you need to have. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, performance. Performance is a very important aspect uh, in the music business. Uh, you are recording and performing artists. Yes. All right, what is, uh, what is uh, the, the, the power of a powerful performance, according to you? Um, I think a powerful performance to me is when you can really connect with your audience mm -hmm. and also being a strong vocalist. Because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of musicians nowadays are more... Um, recorded artists mm -hmm. and they rely a lot of mm -hmm. on auto-tune and you know all of those things that mm -hmm. happen in the magic in the studio mm -hmm. um, and the effects but when you can actually sound just as good mm -hmm. as you do live then on your records I think that's really a 10 out of 10 performance for me 10 out of 10 <laughs> performance for you all yeah. right uh, talking about the, the the business aspect of the music uh, after taking it to school what was the next step for you because I, I see a lot of people go to school and then look for a job mm. or start a business or start a, a startup somewhere True. what was the next step for you transforming this from something you actually love and study uh, to a business um, for me it was more like uh, how can I do this full-time mm -hmm. that was um, my main goal is like how can I create an income doing what I love? Because mm -hmm. that's what we all want to do at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Um, so for me, I started now recording and writing my own songs because mm -hmm. I needed to put out content. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my initial focal point was to now get myself in the studio, mm -hmm. get myself surrounded with the right people, mm -hmm. um, produce content, quality content, mm -hmm. and then now create a fan base, mm -hmm. not just locally, but globally as well. All right. Yeah. All right, for many artists who are in it for the money, I don't know what you're <laughs> in it for. Uh, the approach is always uh, the market first. What does the market want? And then I go to the studio and make what the market wants. Mm. Uh, but for the artists who are passionate about their craft, they tend to say, I make what I love and put it out there. Uh, I don't care how it's going to resonate <laughs> with the people. Which approach is it for you? Um, I'd say it's the second one, because mm -hmm. even for me, I didn't have the mentality of, oh, I'm making this album for people. Mm -hmm. It was more for myself, mm -hmm. like for my own expression. Mm -hmm. And if people connect with it, then that's all and well. Mm -hmm. But for me, music is such a personal thing mm -hmm. that I think that's what makes someone successful also at the end of the day, mm -hmm. is when you can really put your heart and soul into your music and then release it to the world. All right. Uh, ever since Mercy Myra, then we transitioned to a different age of R&B. We had the Antonio Souls, mm -hmm. we have the Saudi Souls, <laughs> and the Ben Souls, and, and, and all the souls that exist, <laughs> and the Saudis that exist in the country. Uh, do you think there's a space uh, for R&B in the country do. right now? I do. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know... There's this whole approach of you only have to stick to Afro beats because mm -hmm. you're in Africa mm -hmm. or you only have to make this kind of music or you only have to sing in this language. But I think um, 
that's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. It's because we want to be global artists, but we don't want to do global genres. Mm -hmm. And so I think there is a space now for um, African artists to delve into these different genres so that mm -hmm. we want to see us winning. We want to see us on BET. We want to uh -huh. be winning Grammys. But uh -huh. how can we do that if we only limit ourselves to only uh -huh. specific to genres? what people are used to. Yeah. And what people <laughs> might love. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are on social media as Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on Instagram, and Y254 on Facebook. Hashtag is Y in the morning. Hashtag is Entrepreneurship Tuesday. And uh, mine is at It's Barry Moore, so you can interact with me directly. What is yours, Kali? Um, all of my social media is at I am Cali Music. All right. A fan is asking, do you get compared to Calligraph Jones? That is uh, <laughs> from, a, from a fan out there who's watching. Um, uh, do you get confused, rather? Yeah, I mean, there are many Kali's. I know there's Jua Kali, there's Calligraph <laughs> Jones. So, <laughs> but mine's just straight up Kali. Uh -huh. And then at least I'm female too. So mm -hmm. that, that also helps. <laughs> All right, where, where is the name from? Um, so my full name is Mwikali. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of, uh -huh. you know, self-explanatory. <laughs> there's no need to spread the story. Yeah. All right. So uh, talking about uh, the the music as a business, so mm -hmm. I'll take you back. Uh, you released an EP, and uh, once you're done recording, uh, the rollout process is 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 a different ball game. It is. How was the rollout process for? You? So basically, what you have to do is register yourself mm -hmm. as a singer or a songwriter mm -hmm. so that you make sure that you get your royalties because mm -hmm. that's also a really big part of it is you want to create an income when you get radio play um, if your songs are on streaming um, so that was like the main priority on getting your songs on all streaming platforms so it's mm -hmm. available to now multiple people around mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. um, and then now you focus on marketing yourself mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. you know creating hype and creating buzz and mm -hmm. being like oh she's dropping something mm -hmm. you know um, and then you release it and you see how the world takes All right. it <laughs> is this something you studied in school or you just winged it um, I did take a business management course mm -hmm. um, even though I was focused on performance there mm -hmm. was the business side of it mm -hmm. and I really did want was to know. Was it one of your favorite classes? I wouldn't <laughs> say it was one of my favorites but it was uh -huh. knowledgeable. I needed uh -huh. to know what I was getting myself into mm -hmm. because I know also some record labels they have you know different record deals mm -hmm. and so to look through I think it's really important so that you don't get cheated in the music mm -hmm. industry. All right, mm -hmm. you're signed to a label uh, that is based in Australia. Yes. Uh, they're distributing your music as we speak. Yes. Uh, you affiliated to other management deals in, in Nairobi mm -hmm. right now. And uh, your, your aim is to take the music worldwide. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, how did you get into this deal? And uh, what did you learn going into this deal? Uh, with my record label. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a graduating recital, which is where now you basically have a mini concert mm -hmm. and you still get like marked on it and graded. Mm -hmm. And so at this concert, they invite a lot of people in the industry to come and watch. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I got scouted by mm -hmm. my label mm -hmm. and they really liked my performance. And mm -hmm. so they were interested in now working with me. And then that's how I ended up um, getting signed to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So uh, you get uh, a call from a label exec. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, they presented some papers to you. Yes. All right. Did you read the papers? Of course. I even uh -huh. had to go through them with a lawyer uh -huh. just to make sure I was getting the percentages that I deserve as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you really have to look through the nitty gritty because mm -hmm. one clause can literally change your life. All right. <laughs> so, you know <laughs> your contract word by word. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> you know most word, of it. Yeah. Right, you know, you know most of it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, many artists uh, tend to be doing independent stuff right now, as we speak, because mm -hmm. uh, streaming sites have made it possible uh, for artists to to be independent and just push the movement and maybe sign distribution deals with major labels. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it that made you get into a record deal when? artists of your generation or of our generation uh, say we, we can do it ourselves that is the um, message they're preaching i saw chance the rapper saying the same mm -hmm. thing the other day uh, that is the message young artists are preaching but you chose to go the other direction mm. uh -huh. um well the thing is for me i also was that kind of person that's just like i can do it myself i mm -hmm. really don't need a whole label to do all this stuff for me because like you said it's so easy nowadays mm -hmm. but the label I'm signed to is independent mm -hmm. and it also gave me a lot of freedom mm -hmm. to do 
like what I want to and kind of be in control of my music, whereas other labels are a bit more um, mm -hmm. controlling of the artists. Mm -hmm. So I made sure I could have my freedom mm -hmm. and then they could also help me because I figured out that as much as you can do a lot by yourself, mm -hmm. when you have a whole team helping you, it actually makes a huge difference. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. This, uh, the, 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 the last questions of the interview, uh, probably the last two are always opinion based. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to get your opinions on, uh, on a few topics here. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. All right. I'm so uh, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you're in touch uh, with the Kenyan music scene, mm -hmm. uh, number of ciphers dropped uh, the, other, the other week. Mm -hmm. uh, which one could be your favorite? A number of ciphers. Oh, different. like different artists dropping different songs yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, different freestyle ciphers. Ah. Or, uh, so we had Calligraph yes, Jones dropping the, the, the Kali Katel one. Right. We had Kevo K Force dropping the 31 uh, cipher. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Wakadinali dropping another one. Uh, we True. had people dropping, dropping, dropping. Which one could uh, could have been your favorite? I like. Um, there was one that King Kaka did with four female. Mm -hmm rappers it had to be that one it was so good <laughs> i couldn't help it i loved it <laughs> it had to be that one yeah. so king kaka carried uh, carried the week for you yes yeah all right so uh the next one is uh your your you have your phone with you right now uh it's in my it's bag. over there yeah all right the music player on your phone which artist would i find on your um you would find janae aiko mm -hmm. lma ariana grande um daniel caesar mm -hmm. And then also like a bit of old school, like Brandy, Monica, um, mm -hmm. Tamia, it's so many, uh, but right. very R&B based people, yeah. All right, so uh, another, another, we are going to be playing your music towards the end of the show. You have two videos on YouTube. Please remind them your YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, my YouTube channel mm -hmm. is youtube.com slash I am Cali Music. All right, I am Kali Music. You can find that on social media as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we play the music, we have a question on our Facebook uh, for Entrepreneurship Tuesday or Hustle Tuesday. And uh, the question is, which uh, transaction mode do you prefer? Card, mobile money, or cash? Um, and why? <laughs> Probably like what I use the most or Your which? Your preference. The one preference. that would make life easiest for you. I think card. Card is the one for you. Yeah. All right. Reason being? I think because uh, when I was in Australia, I used to use my card uh -huh. so much. And it was just so much better to carry a card instead of all this cash. All right. Yeah. All right. I feel <laughs> that. So there, she said it. Card works for her. Keep your, your views or your comments about this particular question on Facebook coming. Uh, we'll be very happy to read them. Even if not today, we are always happy to receive your feedback. So keep them coming on our Facebook. Uh, that is at Y254. And we have Kali in studio. She has two videos on YouTube so far of her latest EP. She's going to pick the one that we are going to play. Uh, which one? Uh, I know this is hard to play favorites with you kids but uh, just pick one for us uh you can go ahead and watch attention because attention is on the ep attention is on the ep yes all right one last time i'll give you a chance to tell them how they can interact with you and your last message to the girl child since i saw you were really passionate about them yes uh -huh. um so thank you guys for having me on the show mm -hmm. um you can find me at i am cali music on all social media platforms and to my women in the industry keep doing your thing honestly um and just keep being yourselves and yeah all right. That's all I can say. Keep being yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Kali said it. You can find the EP on every streaming uh, platform. Uh, the name of the EP? Different Definitions of Love Part 1. Part 1. So we're looking to see Part 2. Yes. All right. Different Definitions of Love is on every streaming site uh, by Kali. You can head to her YouTube channel, um, Kali. I am Kali Music. Yes. I am Kali Music. Uh, support, 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 and enjoy Kenyan music. We have come to the end of our Entrepreneurship Tuesday uh, today on Y in the Morning. You can find me at It's By Mo on social media. Tomorrow is Queen's Wednesday. We are celebrating all the queens out there, uh, so you don't want to miss it. And today we still have a lot of shows lined up for you uh, from uh, the bounce in the evening uh, to the rest of them. Uh, so you don't want to change the dial. You don't want to. You don't want to take the dial rather or change the channel. Uh, see you tomorrow.